Yeah, so one of the problems is that the uh, M2, the velocity of money is being reduced. Obviously, we don't have the stimulus and the Fed is starting to slow the bond buying. So that's going to slow down the velocity of money, which is the rate of people that uh, spend cash. So that's a problem. Also, ETFs. You've noticed that ETFs come in at the end of the uh, trading day, and that's where most of the velocity, because they take down the liquidity, and that brings down, that increases the velocity. I always think about these conditions as making it, you know, tougher for investors who are checking on this stuff day to day, but creating big opportunities, the very kinds of opportunities people feel like they're missing out on when the market just placidly ticks higher half a percent every day. Exactly. And so what we start looking for are those stocks that have pricing power. Because ultimately, that's where you want to spend your time researching. And you have to be very selective in your stocks. You want to find those stocks that have high demand for their products or services. You want to find stocks that have a low, uh, being able to be replaced at a very low rate. And also, you want those stocks that have a high barrier of entry. A high, yeah, exactly, for our competitors. All right, so you have at least three names here which you think actually could be a place for investors to look EOG is one of them, an energy play, Key Corp, the bank, and Amphenol. So each one of these, what makes them attractive to you? What makes them attractive? If we look at uh, energy, uh, the oil has went from, it was uh, about $48 at the end of 2020. It is now at about $90, 100% gain. So you want to have some exposure to energy. And one of the best companies that we found is EO, EOG Resources. It has a very compelling growth profile. It has an inventory of oppor opportunities for drilling and a very disciplined management team. What we really like about it is that in the last, since 2018, it has increased its revenues from natural gas, which is a cleaner burning fuel, by 70%. Also, the management team ties their compensation to the reduction of carbon emissions. Lastly, we look at where is, where is the uh, market sentiment. The market sentiment is very good for EOG. It's surprised on EPS about 7%, and it's up about 29% year to date. If we look at the banking um, sector, key, yeah, key bank, we really which like I'm, regional bank. I'm curious as well, and I, you're going to speak to this, but at a time when people are concerned about the flattening yield curve, explain why you think key bank would still be attractive. It's attractive because ultimately, as we have the interest rates increasing, basically regional banks get most of their revenues from the net interest income. Unlike the big banks that get their uh, cash flows from also capital markets and the uh, asset managers, and these the uh, capital markets, asset managers have been doing poorly given this market. So you want to look at regional banks, plus the fact that uh, Key Corp has increased their loans by 6%. They increase their deposit by 8%. And then also they have an acquisition strategy. They've added a business-to-business -business digital platform. They have a, they just acquired an analytical consulting company and a digital lending platform. Once again, we look at where's the market sentiment. Market sentiment for uh, Key Corp is very positive. It has a EPS surprise of about 12% year to date. Price performance about 13%. So that's why we really like Key Corp, a regional bank. Yeah, and as I said, your last pick is Amphenol, ticker APH. They make cables and circuits. They have industrial and military demand. Could you just give us a parting comment then on what you're expecting for the market this year and the risks around the Fed? It sounds like you do think that what we've seen in January is a template for what's still to come. Exactly. So what we see is that there's going to be a lot of volatility in the first half. The second half, we're going to see the uh, market smooth out a little bit. But during that first half, we're expecting that in March, there's going to be a Fed heightening of the interest rates, maybe as much as 50, uh, 50 bips. And then we see another 25 to 50 bips by year end. So first half is going to be very bumpy. Second half will start smoothing out. All right. Degas, thanks for your time today. We appreciate it very much.